Hey, Ben and Katie here from Reorigin, and in this video we're gonna talk about brain flexibility. What is it, how do you foster it, and why is it so fun? All right, so when we think about something like brain retraining, oftentimes, initially, when we start to look into these things, we may think about trying to get to a certain place, right? I want to reclaim my health, I want to improve this skill or ability, and I wanna basically get from where I am to where I wanna be or think I wanna be. And really what we want, I think more than anything, or what's most valuable is sure, arriving at a certain point, but even more than that, it's cultivating this ability to continuously arrive at new places. And what I'm calling brain flexibility will give us really the ability to continuously change the brain on demand. And so today we're gonna to just talk about some of our favorite ways to improve neuroplasticity, to retrain the brain, and to help our brains become more flexible. And I will say that, interestingly, this has a transferable effect, that the same way that we, when we become more physically flexible, we feel less rigid, I think that's sort of obvious, but what's also interesting is that when we become more cognitively flexible, we find that we become less rigid in our thinking as well. We find ourselves more open and willing to have new experiences, face new challenges, and not feel so weighed down by them. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna kick it over to you first, Katie. What are some of your favorite ways to improve your brain's flexibility? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely like doing old things in a new way. So any of the activities uh, that I would normally just kind of like go on autopilot while I'm doing them, I like to mix it up, I like to do it in a new way. A really common example of this is like taking a new route to work or something, something like that. So trying new, not necessarily trying a new thing, but just looking at something that you've been doing the same way, day in, day out, and trying it differently. Like a good example might be um, like, <laughs> this is, this is, might sound silly, but like when you get in the shower thinking about like, what's the thing I do first? I generally wash my face first, but maybe you go in and you wash your hair first. And literally just those tiny little things mixing, mixing them up can, can help you keep you on your toes, uh, keep your brain, brain flexible. And the other thing that I really love to do is I love to have conversations with people who have different opinions than me. And you even mentioned this just a second ago, right? When our brain becomes, when our body is flexible, it's less rigid. When our brain is flexible, it becomes less rigid. So talking to people that aren't in my like sphere of life experience and just getting to know them and hearing their opinions and why do they feel that way, it allows me to not only feel more flexible in my own thoughts and opinions, but also it's really helped me cultivate more self-compassion for other people and also self-compassion for myself. So uh, conversations, debates potentially uh, is, is something that I really enjoy, just keeping my brain fresh and flexible. Yeah, that's fantastic. And we can think about it like when we are inflexible, again, using as a physical example, we don't really have that many possibilities. We don't have a big range of motion. You know, if we're really inflexible and we can't put our arms over our head, if we go to, if we wanted to reach that glass on the top shelf, we're kind of limited to the glasses that are on the bottom shelf, right? Um, similarly, if we wanted to touch our toes or squat, we're kind of really limited in these certain ranges of motion. And so as we develop more flexibility, we develop more possibility. And the same is definitely true for the brain. So that's great to hear. Um, yeah, I love that engaging with different opinions, different viewpoints. It just gives our minds the ability to go places that they might not have otherwise been able to go. So I think one of the keys to fostering brain flexibility is you already really put your finger on it, which is novel experiences or even taking old experiences and just adding little tweaks so that they, you start doing them in a new way. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to do this. Novel environments, having new experiences that can be going on a trip, but it can even be taking what I like to call a backyard adventure, right? <laughs> Maybe you walk to a different place where you've never been before. Maybe you even just go sit in a different part of the park or corner of the park or corner of the room that you don't normally sit in. And that really gives you a different you know, vantage point, different perspective, and, um, and helps your brain just kind of expand in that way. Mm -hmm. And in terms of novelty, there was even this experiment we talked about in the Reorigin program that was uh, documented some years ago about bus drivers where they compared the hippocampus, this 
part of the brain that maps the terrain uh, of bus drivers with the hippocampus of taxi drivers. And bus drivers are following the same exact route, day in, day out, they just go the same route. Whereas taxi drivers take different routes. Someone gives them a direction, and this is pre-GPS when this study was done. <laughs> I wonder if it would have changed now. Yeah, that's but true. But pre-GPS, they would have to think about the destination, and then they would have to think about how to get there and perhaps even change their route in real time depending on the traffic or the street closures and so forth. They didn't have a, a line to follow or dot to follow on the <laughs> GPS. And what they found was that when they did MRIs of the two groups' brains, the taxi drivers who were going these novel directions, taking these novel routes, had a more developed, bigger hippocampus. Yes, their brain actually increased in volume because they had practiced novelty. Mm. So bringing it back to flexibility, how are some ways, what are some ways that you can cultivate flexibility? We've talked about small tweaks, novel experiences, taking different routes to work, changing your perspective and engaging in nuanced or new conversations. One more that I'll add to that is going back to the body. And this is literally to just cultivate your physical flexibility. And this is where that, what I call transferable effect really comes into play. And we did a whole video on the mind-body connection and how there's something between the brain and the body called bi-directional feedback or peripheral feedback loops that takes place, which means that, yes, we can think something and that will change certain actions or activities in the body. We can, I can think I'm gonna raise my right hand and that will activate motor neurons and there it went, there's the right hand going up, right? Starts as a thought, ends up as an action. We can also change our actions and our, our make changes to our physical bodies and that can actually send new information back up to the brain. And so when we increase our physical flexibility, and this doesn't have to be like tight stretching, right? This can be something as simple as just rolling your shoulders right? Rolling your wrists, um, broadening out, increasing that range of motion, that actually literally gives us this feeling of tranquility, of lack of restriction, and increased capabilities in the future. So what are some ways that you can foster brain flexibility? Leave them in the comments below, and we will look forward to seeing you in a future video.